Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Kareem Clement. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here right here, right now. This is Live at Nine. Had a little brain fart right there, but yes, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. This is live at nine on Thursday, right here, right now. So we have a busy, 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 busy uh, Thursday, and I'm going to bring in live at nine. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so where do I begin? I mean, it's just like so much happening, but I will, I would like to start off with breaking news, okay? There is breaking news coming from out of social media network right here, right now. Uh, we have now just learned that the name and uh, uh, we have now gotten more information on the 14-year-old boy who was stabbed to death in a random attack. And please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you can, uh, you can also indulge yourself in some more content at the ticker at the bottom uh, to update you on some of the stories across the country and around the world. All right. So, yeah, so a 14-year-old boy has now been identified, 14 year old boy has now been identified as Ray Rogers, a uh, 14 year old who was stabbed by a 39 year old homeless man in Florida, Beach Garden, Florida. This is breaking news coming from out of social media network. They're saying that um, this was an act of random attack now why are they saying a random attack well let's let's get into the information but before i start off with the information i just want to put up my disclaimer right here right now okay this channel and these videos are not meant for children under the age of 13. Warning, Omega Studio News and Talk Show T contain warning, Omega Studio News, Talk Show T, Kareem in the Morning, and also Live at Nine, you must be over the age of 18, okay? So... Warning, the views expressed and opinions expressed on this program is just that views do not take it as serious, but I will warn you, viewer discretion is advised. Okay, got that out of the way. All right, so uh, this is live at nine. And uh, now I have been gone for a long time. But I've been doing Kareem in the Morning and I've been doing other uh, programs for the platform. But here at Live at Nine, it basically, uh, just like all my other platforms, we talk about stories that matters to you, my social media followers, fans. And I talk about it right here on the show. So it could be, it, de it depends on, you know, I say, I, I talk about every a little bit of everything on you know, all my platforms, but certain platforms talk about more certain things. But here I'm going to talk about usually breaking news and also trends in social media. So this part here, I would like to bring up this, this part, what I'm going to do, the part right here in Live at Nine, I'm going to start off with weird and true. Okay, weird and true. Now, on this uh, segment, on this episode today on weird and true, the question is, why were graham crackers invented? Okay, that's the question someone sent me, 
and I'm going to answer it by going to social media. Why were graham crackers invented? So they are now, and I'm going to also, along with uh, social media, are going to talk about some of the truth behind the snack origin. So a lot of people love graham crackers, okay? And I know a lot of people, maybe you may have heard it, some other people may have heard it, you may have seen TikToks, may have seen Twitters, but they have asked the question, why were graham crackers invented? Okay. Now, why was it invented? Well, let's find out. So they're saying that graham crackers were invented in a method to stop people experiencing sexual desires. So they said the man behind them named Reverend Sylvester Graham, a Presbyterian minister who became obsessed with healthier living and the idea that sexual desires were sinful and could even cause physical alignment. Reverend Graham believed that lust could cause such serious issues as epilepsy and spinal disease and even the earlier death of offspring. Many people followed him and shared his views. So basically, uh, let's read on. It says he believed, uh, he believed it was a key in re uh, re re uh, re repressing these ideas and he advocated for a strictly vegetarian diet, high in fiber. He thought meat and that increased lust and was extremely anti-refined with white flour instead of flavoring unsifted wheat flavor. This present led him to create graham bread, which is graham bread made from unsifted flour. This is turned spawn into the graham cracker. So it was dispute whether that Reverend Graham himself actually invented the cracker, the graham cracker, said sources he did in, in 1829, where others say it did not exist until 1882, 31 years after his death. Either way, he was a key, key influence behind it, and the cracker still bears his name today. And uh, so basically, they, they are now made with bleach, white flour, contrary to all Reverend Graham beliefs, and sweetly flavored. So basically, that's why graham crackers was invented. All right, so that's weird and true. I don't really eat graham crackers because I was watching um like Hack, and in the Hack, um uh, the the video show a lot of uh, processed food or like certain foods that we eat today dissolve. And I think they show like what an Oreo look like when it dissolves. It showed what graham crackers look like when it dissolves. The animal crackers, what it looked like. I think they dissolved a muffin. I think they, dis they, they dissolved a lot of foods, like especially the processed foods, right? They dissolved the processed foods and they dissolved it. And you guys like my backgrounds too, right? Uh, they dissolved it. And inside of it, I think what got people's attention was, especially in the um, the corn muffin and the other uh, and stuff that they had dissolved, it was like this substance, like you just, it was almost like, like rubbery. So, I mean, a lot of people don't really eat graham crackers. Some people do eat graham crackers to, you know, fight their diet, but we just learned what graham crackers, and if you want to Google it yourself or ask, you know who, then do that. Okay? All right. So, here on Live at Nine, I do know that uh, there was a story down at the bottom where it says Portia Williams detailed East encounter or post encounter with R. Kelly, and he was one of the men who took advantage of me mentally abused me. So I have this story right here from social media that's uh, uh, talking about 
this. But before I um, continue, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I think I know. Okay, so yeah, so basically before I move on with the homeless man, the because I did run, I ran the uh, ads and then I forgot. Okay, the homeless man uh, from Miami was charged with murder of the 14-year-old Ray Rogers who was found stabbed to death in, his, in Palm Beach Garden. The man has been as identified, I'm not going to say his name, but a 39-year-old was taken into custody. And they're saying that uh, the Palm Beach Garden police charged him with first-degree murder and with a weapon. In his first appearance on, on Thursday morning, where he was told he will be held without bail or without bond. Officials say there is no more at this time to believe that this was completely a random random incident with an innocent child and a victim. Uh, they are also saying that, uh, let me see. Okay, so they're saying that he was found dead on November 16th, just south of I-95 overpass on Central Boulevard with his bike nearby. He was found two dozen feet from the sidewalk in a wooded area out of plain sight. See, this is a story that you don't really hear in social media until you in that state or that city, because I didn't really hear anything about this, because it's not like our, our city going to report news from Florida. So maybe, and, and from reading this, is like a child was dead or a child was, you know, murdered on the streets. And it probably went, you know, unanswered until we see now because they just saying that a homeless man was uh, uh, apprehended and we're going to now find out how he was apprehended. But according to this, uh, this according to this, there, according to social media, they're saying that data from uh, Rogers phone revealed that he was traveling south on I-95 overpass and stopped at about 7.31 p.m. And that the vic and that the suspect was seen on surveillance video walking northbound on Central Boulevard at 7:20 p.m. And the two would have crossed paths at 7:31 p.m. What is a 14-year-old doing outside at 7:30 p.m.? That's my question. The autopsy result shows that Roger was stabbed multiple times in the head and face. Police say his cause of death was ruled homicide. So, uh, according to this, police say headphones were found at the crime scene, and they did not belong to Rogers, which is a 14-year-old. And they say that DNA sample produced a positive match between belonging to the 39-year-old homeless man. So, when the 39-year-old homeless man was located in Miami, the blood-stained bandana was found in his backpack. Also, they also uh, analyzed, showed that two um, other blessings that was on there match the 14-year-old and the 39-year-old homeless man. So when he was interviewed by law enforcement, the 39-year-old denied any interactions with Rogers. So uh, the officials have said that he was located and there is evidence that he traveled to Palm Beach County on November 15th and returned Miami, Florida the very next day. So they have him in custody. The 39-year-old homeless man is also, uh, he has a criminal record. It's always like that where um, they have a criminal record and they out on the street and they commit these heinous crimes to the point where you cannot, it's irreversible. Like usually when you hear about these people, uh, especially when you hear about the uh, Kenosha guy who uh, killed those people on the Christmas Day parade, he had an extensive background. Uh, this guy right here, a homeless man, he out on the street, he has an extensive background. It goes all the way back to 2004, carrying a concealed uh, weapon. 2004, another domestic assault. 2005, domestic assault. 2014, battery on a person 65 and older. 2016, uh, well, that was 2014. 2016, arrested in San Diego and Walmart. 2016, aggressive assault with, with strangulation. And it just goes on and on and on. 
okay? He has an extreme background in his jacket. And it's like men like this, you know, I mean, obviously he's not working. He doesn't, he's, he doesn't have family. He's not with anybody. He's 39 years old. He's on the street. He doesn't have a job, okay? And he's walking around. I know a lot of people are like probably reported on him. They're probably like, you know, um, probably, you know, uh, got the cops to get him moved out. And probably He probably has trespassing charges. We don't know. But the question is, is that he went back out in society. He wasn't rehabilitated and he killed a 14 year old child. OK, so the damage is done. It's irreversible. You cannot do anything but put this man away for the rest of his life. And how can we get the future people that's going to kill? How do we get in touch to, with them to let them know, like, before you kill, that mental health that you're dealing with is something that you can, it's okay to go and talk to a therapist. It's okay to go and seek counseling. It's okay to do that. But when you have people who are dealing with, with just, you know, and it's not just dealing with life itself. You could be dealing with drug problems, job problems, uh, just just problems and problems in general. You know, so you're struggling, and then you go out and kill a 14 year old. So let's go ahead and continue on this story because I know there's more to it. So apparently. Uh, they're saying that uh, officials said that investigators was extremely challenged at the beginning, and there was lots of information that couldn't be released to the public without endangering what they had, what they were doing. So I can understand that if they didn't have a, a suspect in custody, and they put evidence out there, then it would hinder the investigation because if that person is watching social media, watching the news, listening to the radio, like it's. They know it's me, bitch. I'm about to get the fuck up out of here. You feel me? But again, this is a 39 year old homeless man. Okay. So the investigation moved very rapidly, very rapid, very fast, quick, with lots of local federal department help across the Palm Beach County. They also, and I'm, I'm pretty sure the Federal Bureau of Investigation was involved because this is a 14 year old, this is a child. What is a 14 year old? walking on the streets of Palm Beach Garden in Florida at that ungodly hour without the company of his mother or his father or his sister and brother or somebody, okay? Or maybe he detoured from school, but seven, it's, it's, it's dark outside at that time, right? I'm just saying. So the Palm Beach Garden police say that they increased patrol in the community aiming an investigation. The chief said that they, while people should always be vigilant, the community is safe and they removed the dangerous monster from the street. And that this incident could have happened in any location. This investigation is ongoing. So a 14 year old boy had to lose his life. He had to lose his life in the street. Okay, by a homeless man. It's disgusting. Okay, so this is a shocker too. So I do know that in archives, I'm sorry if I'm smacking, I'm eating on some yogurt trail mix and then I'm pop open these cranberry trail mix. That's because I'm going to dinner and uh, I'm only snacking before so I don't eat too much. All right. But before I continue that, I want to go ahead and say this story. Now, you guys may have read also at the bottom that Cuomo, right? 
Chrome bóng And we're talking about we talk well, let's get this right. We're talking about Chris Como. Okay. Chris Como is out. And this is the brother of the formal governor, Cuomo, of, of New York, who I believe resigned or stepped down because, because of allegations that was brought up by the Attorney General Office, Letitia James, and on sexual misconduct against his staffer. So the brother, right? And it's so crazy because, well, it's not crazy, Kareem. No, I'm about to tell you why it's so crazy. Because listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. When, when the formal governor was in the spotlight, right? As Nene Leaks would say, I have arrived, honey, and the spotlight is on me. When the pandemic was happening in New York, and the former governor, Cuomo, was doing as much as he could possibly do to get spotlight attention on how he was guiding his citizens of the of the of the great country, the great city or the great state of New York, right? His brother actually talked on the show because he had a show on CNN about um, what his brother was doing, and it was kind of like everybody was like, "Oh, you know, we feel so." happy and we feel great grateful that he's doing it then hold on then the news had broke that chris cuomo had contracted COVID, right and 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 he had to isolate himself or 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 um or yeah isolate himself or uh i don't know how long but what happened was he wound up isolating himself in his basement, right? So he had to isolate himself. And then I guess at some point on CNN and, you know, certain places they had, they brought up snippets of him and it was like, oh, brother contact. When a brother uh, who was the governor, who was formal governor, had his press conference every time he had the coronavirus uh, thing going on, he would talk about how his brother, but they were like, oh, now, the governor, the former governor, Cuomo, is out. And now, Chris Cuomo is out. And he is out. Why? Now, let's see. Let's see why he's out. Now, I'm pretty sure he probably was going to do a, oh. Because what happened was, well, I don't really know what happened, but I do know that CNN suspended him indefinitely. So let's see. Chris Cuomo has been has responded to his indefinite suspension from CNN. Like, how can you mess up? So you have something good going on for yourself. You have something good going on for yourself, and now you have this. Like you, you would think like, uh. Talk about the story. Oh, go with the story. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, Cuomo was suspended after the network found out that he was heavily involved in defending his brother. This is the thing. Heavily defending. Now, you know that you're an anchor or a reporter or you work with CNN. And you deliver the news, whether it's a good, high impact, low impact, you still deliver it to the people of this great country. And you had that opportunity because you know CNN is 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 on is in everybody's home, on everybody's phone, on everybody's tablet. Okay, so everybody's gonna see your face. And I've seen his face, and I don't even watch CNN, and I've seen his face, I've heard his voice. And, you know, you got something going good for yourself, man. Something good going on for yourself. Then you pretty much, something like this happens. Now, what are you saying? What can you say? 
And by the way, the involvement, again, defending his brother, the formal governor, Andrew Cuomo, on sexual misconduct allegations. Now, I don't know, but you should already have known that, that you have to separate the, the personal and business. Like now your your career and everything is is in shambles right now. Because now you like you're doing a lot of like trying to like find out information. And I can understand you could have had done a better way of doing that. You knew it was gonna be a breach of any contract because you're working with CNN. That's number one. Who you are, number two. And it's like don't say it. I was gonna say, M M M M Y O B. Mind your business. I was gonna say something else. Mind your business because if you don't mind your business, it's like, did you have something to do with that? Are you trying to cover it up? Like, come on now. Are y'all holding something? Y'all, y'all brothers. Y'all share the same last name. Family stick together. Blood is thicker than water. I don't know how they say it, but come on now. You done lost your job because you was you wanted to oh. And now, now what? You are suspended indefinitely. That's gonna fuck up a lot. Of, but then again, then again, then again, hold up, then again. Maybe just because CNN, you know, God said one door closes, another door open, you know, but sometimes it depends, like, if it could send a ripple, a ripple effect down the waves, okay, and all you got to do is that somebody just pick up the phone call and be like, just do one, just say one word, and that ripple effect. You see what happened to Monique? You see what happened to a lot of people that... We we seen then and we ain't see again. I'm just saying. But Cromo, you should have just zipped it. And if you would have zipped it and stopped being all haul, then you would probably still have a job today. So the statement and and quote. Uh, on uh, uh, on the Siri XM show, it says, I've been suspended from CNN. You know this already. It hurts to even say it is embarrassing. Of course it's embarrassing. Of course it's embarrassing, bitch. And, and let me ask the question. Can I ask this question? Can I ask this question? Is he suspended indefinitely with or without pay? Because I don't know how that works. Is he suspended with or without pay? But he's saying this is embarrassing. But I understand it. And I understand why people feel the way they do about what I did. What did you do, bitch? Did you breach of that confidentiality that you knew the difference between you? I'm, I'm sure you knew. It was because he was... Oh, he let that... The, the, the comfort of who he is to really protect his brother and not sitting those difference aside and looking at his career and like, yo, am I really going to play the all game? Or I'm going to really step my pussy up, according to T.S. Madison, and get the job done and set set those things aside. And if you would have done that, and, re, and, and you, you probably would have still had a job today. But let's go on. So he says, I apologize in the past, and I mean it. And it's the last thing I ever wanted to do was compromise any of my colleagues and do anything but help. Anything but help? All you was doing is, oh, how could you have helped? You knew. Well, I don't know how much you know. We don't know how much he knows. We don't know what conversations they probably had. Shit. He probably allegedly. I'm not. No, let me not put that in the archives. No, see, damn it. You already said your your disclaimers earlier. 
we don't know if he probably had anything to do with it. Well, no, because if he did, then uh, 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 the girls would have uh, uh, brought him up in those allegations. Well, I'm talking about mentally. I'm talking about mentally. Mentally, a heavily impact on somebody's mind, especially if you're my damn brother or my sister. I'm just saying, okay? Mentally, he probably knew about it, okay? But he just wanted people to understand that he apologized to his colleagues and that he do he didn't do anything but help. And I know there have a has a process that they think is important, and I respect that the process. So I'm going. I'm not going to talk about this anymore. Bitch, you suspended indefinitely. What more can you say? What more can you say? Yeah, it's suspended indefinitely, bitch. Okay. Now, again, I want to know: is that with or without pay? I'm not going to talk about this anymore than that that. So for right now, let's just get after it. And there's plenty to do on that score. Listen, your words bit you right in your ass. Because if that's the words that you choose to say, then if 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 you could have put that, if you could have rewind back time and put those words into perspective before you even oh then you would have had a job today and even if he didn't know about what happened you already know your last name bitch you know your last name got fired at the end of it because you already know that your brother is in some hot water And that he is not being respected anymore because of what everybody is believing that he allegedly did. And you know there's the Me Too movement. You know we have gone through that route down that road with Harvey Weinstein. We have gone down that road with Bill Cosby. We have gone down that road with R. Kelly. We have gone down that road. And there's just a lot of other people. that is going to come forth, have come forth, and that people are not understanding that those statute of limitations, those states are not caring. They come forward when they're ready because it's just such a crime that committed to somebody and they're so traumatized by it that it takes some time for them to heal mentally, even if they are healed mentally. But this is something that he should have mind his own business. And if he wasn't on it, then maybe he would have a job. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so, uh, yeah, so I want to just take this time out to say thank you. Thank you for joining me today on Live at Nine. And then you can find me on Facebook, Kareem J. Clemens, Twitter, Omega Studio News, and YouTube. Okay? And one uh, story I would like to also touch a little bit based off uh, social media is uh, I will give a little bit of light on the, uh, let me just go ahead and see if I can find that one. If not, then I'll just go ahead and call it. Um, okay, I'll just call it. All right. 
So, yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, this has been live at nine, man. Um, I want to say thank you guys so much for being here with me on this great, it hasn't even been an hour. I thought it was going to run an hour, but it's all good. All right, so yeah, so yes, uh, I'm, 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 I really, really appreciate the fact that StreamYard was able to give me the opportunity to run a longer ticker. So I'm, I'm hoping that you guys got your life down there. We also learned. Shout out to LeBron James and his family, uh, wishing him a speedy recovery on him uh, contracting COVID-19. So hopefully uh, he is doing well. And also there is more information that I shared down there about young Dolph being buried in a golden casket with 50,000 in his pocket. That is a story from social media that is uh, all on social media. And on the blog page all right so ladies and gentlemen thank you guys so much i want to say shout out to daquan jones thank you so much shout out to al nicholson shout out to princess diamond shout out to carlton boyd shout out to religious wave tv shout out to nay love shout out to dc sanders shout out to you followers those who are here and those who are on their way all right so without further ado Okay, I want to also say, you guys, please tune in to uh, my new series that I have out on social media, which is Kareem in the Morning. I, like I said, I don't have a home for it, but you guys can go and follow it on YouTube, or you guys can follow it on the blog page or where I share it at. Okay, and also, please join me on, on Fridays for jury review jury review jury review jury review and uh basically jury review is talking about everything that happened uh on the platforms and just combining it and we just sitting there be in the background we just talking about everything that's going on in the week all right so again ladies and gentlemen thank you guys so much and i'll see you guys in the next video for more information you guys can visit the blog page have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye. Again, this is Live at 9.